Aloha and welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak, coming to you from Waikiki Beach. Today we're going to go real deep. I hope I'm smart enough to follow this conversation. We have with us our guest, Dr. Jerry Crete. He's got a lot of letters out after his name, but he uh, is a, a therapist specializing in therapy for individuals, couples, and families. He's the founder and president of Transfigure Counseling. And uh, we'll work, we're going to talk story about uh, understanding how to love ourselves and uh, integrating uh, the different parts of our, of our being so that we can be whole and we can be one. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Kickstart that engine and roll thunder with the pack. Explore the grittiness of manly spirituality. Gain traction in the virtues. Zoop up your spiritual engine by turning adversity into adventure. Now here's Bear Wozniak. Let's ride. Aloha. Welcome to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. My wife, Cindy, always says, start off the prayer with the sign of the cross in Hawaiian. So we'll do that. Akemakua, kekeki, amekeohana, hemalele. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I'm coming to you really right here from Waikiki Beach. Um, I started out my Lenten season. I know it's not Lent probably while you're listening to this show, but uh, I was going to go stand up paddle surf every day through, through Lent. And I'm looking out the window in that stormy seas, and so I hope I can live up, to my, uh, live up to my commitment. But we're right next here to St. Augustine's Catholic Church, my office. Our home is right above where the Eucharist is, so it's just a blessing to come to you from Waikiki. I want to let you guys, uh, I'm going to read an, start reading an excerpt from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness, Where Have All the Cowboys Gone, uh, as kind of a, a segue into the show. This is, a, this is an excerpt that says this. You know, it's based on the cowboy theme. Uh, we, all love, we all love our cowboys, and I have a great respect for uh, some of the great Western novelists like Louis L'Amour. I quote him a lot in my books, as well as the catechism in the early fathers in, in the Bible. But here's a quote from the book. Where have all the cowboys gone? Where did we go off the rails? The pill, sexual permissiveness, pornography, the sweep right, sweep left, instant gratification culture with no responsibility allows boys to never become men. Boys that are old enough to be men instead seek pleasure and escape to gaming, drinking, sex, drugs, and rock and roll. These are man boys. They're not even nice guys. They are far from being good men. It is only when a boy faces adversity and accepts responsibility for himself and others that a boy grows to be a man. As John Wayne said, you, you're born a boy, but you've got to become a man. And you become a man, I think, through John Paul II's writings. His first writings were, were love and responsibility. So love, love is a, people want to have that free sort of experience of sex with someone, but that's not love. That's lust. Uh, and they're not taking responsibility for them. So, um, you know, it, it, we need to come back to that place where we, we dignify women as, as subjects of love, not, not objects of lust. And so the challenge really is, I think, for the world today is we need men to be men, and that means men of grit and of grace that will lay, lay their lives down. But it has to start. It's not this get tough, get macho sort of attitude that a man has to have. He needs to... Uh, he needs to realize that he needs the Holy Spirit. You know, men are made out of mud. God, God made men out of a mud. They're full of grit. But then he breathed into them a living soul. And, and, and so that God gives them the relationship with him, the grace with him to live out the way God would have them live out. But one of the challenges, I think, for, uh, for men is, at least I know for my life, is there's this, this, this uh, disconnection with myself. I, I, I often... Uh, I'm very disappointed in myself. There's parts of me I just, I just uh, sometimes go back 40 years. I can't believe I did that stupid thing, you know. Um, and so there's a sort of a lack of integration, I think, in all of us. But there is this one scripture verse in Matthew 22, love others as you love yourself. And it seems like such a sweet, passive thing, like maybe something you could, you know, recite poetry down at the local uh, coffee shop about. <clears throat> but it's more gritty and more real than that because it's not saying just love others. It says you have to love yourself first. If you don't love yourself, <clears throat> how can you love others? And if you can't, can't love others, how can you take on your kuleana, your realm of stewardship and responsibility? So, wow. I, I don't have to say anything more because we got a great guest today with us, uh, Dr. Jerry Crete. What a cool name. Uh, who is, um, is um, 
licensed therapist, and uh, his new book, Litanies of the Heart, uh, really struck a chord with me. So we're welcome to our show, Dr. Crete. Hey, so glad to be here. I want to be, <clears throat> I want to be where you are. He's got a really cool library, you guys. He's got, um, <clears throat> if you watch this on the YouTube version, he's got all these, all these really cool things. But hidden up in the corner, I think I see a Darth Vader mask. What is that up there? <laughs> is that Darth yeah. Vader? What is? <laughs> it is Darth Vader, and it's actually a cookie jar. <laughs> and you open his head, and it makes the breathing sounds of Darth Vader come through, and then you close. So, it. so during Lent, you open, and you go, "No, I, I promise to give those up," and <laughs> and, you, and he gives you that kind of warning, huh? That's cool. So, what kind of cookies are in there? Any? Uh, you know, right now there might not be any because that's kind of hard to reach. That's and another reason, to, right? I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to avoid cookies. So. Yeah, you put it out of reach. Mine are my cookies are always ever in reach. My wife makes me the best chocolate chip cookies. And they're my reward at the end of the day. She makes these little small bite-sized ones. But if I do good all day long, then I get to have a chocolate chip cookie if I watch what I'm eating all day long. Sweet. Well, so, so your new book, um, well, let, let's talk about this. First, we'd just like to get to know you. How do you become this person how, that with this, uh, <laughs> this gift, this charism, this, this, you know, this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, 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 it's a big story, I guess. I'll try to summarize it, uh, you know, in some way that might be helpful. By the way, I loved your introduction, and I love this whole topic of manhood and what it means. Because I think for me, I mean, I grew up in Ottawa, Canada, and um, you know, and and I had a pretty abusive father, and and then a, you know, and then parents divorced, and uh, so I, I would actually sort of say that I was pretty fatherless, and I see that as such a key thing in terms of becoming a man is having a father who loves you and affirms you and guides you and mentors you and all that. Um, and so that was a journey for me anyway, to kind of go from a place of being lost and go from a place of just trying to figure out who I am. And, uh, and, and then, you know, along the way on that journey, uh, you know, I discovered, I, I, I discovered God, I discovered, people who I could trust, uh, you know, and eventually, um, you know, I think in figuring out who I am and who God made me to be led me into lots of areas that I might not have initially ex expected. Like at first it was clear. I, I liked history. I liked literature. So I, I liked philosophy. I liked theology. So I liked these kind of social sciences. And so, and I was smart. And so that got me through a lot of stuff, right? Even if I, you know, um, as a kid, we, we could have easily gotten into a lot more trouble. Well, did, did, did. Did, and, did reading those kind of books have a sense of, of, of cleansing your mind, uh, of, of putting things kind of in order in your mind? Because there must have been a lot of confusion if you... Yeah, well, I actually, that's interesting. Yeah, like definitely I just loved history. But I would say um, the books that were the book, the number one book that was foundational for me was the Lord of the Rings. Like I read the, I read the Lord of the Rings when I was in like fifth and sixth grade and I just fell in love with it. So my retreat, my escape was into books. And so, you know, um, I didn't even realize how much I was absorbing. It wasn't until much later that I realized just how much faith and how much manhood and how much that journey mm. is like the, the whole idea of Strider becoming Aragorn discovering that he's the king he's a king and you know owning that authority that he mm. has to, to actually like restore union you know, unity in middle, all middle earth and everything mm. but when he didn't have that identity when he didn't know who he was and he wasn't pursuing it it was like things were falling apart in the world mm. really essentially um, so I didn't realize even how I was being informed by that. But well, you know, it's so it's so cool because you know, you be careful what you read, um, but read, <laughs> but read because when I, you know, I like to sit down at the beach with my iPad, have a cigar, and I can read. I can be with a good. I can sit down and talk with Augustine. I can read his writings. I can read Aquinas. You know, um, it, it, reading is a great way to to kind of cleanse your mind and kind of reconnect the synapses in your mind and put things in order to be formed and informed. Um, mm -hmm. But but the Middle Earth thing. There's so many people I know that love uh, love Lord of the Rings. I mean, like it was of course he was written by a Catholic, you know, but he created a whole world, a whole language, 
and and uh, you, you just to understand the order of it and the the attack against order that's in it yeah yeah so I you know that definitely moved me I was also a, a kid who um, loved Star Wars so you, you saw the Darth Vader you know I, I think I was seven at the time actually my parents were still together my dad was the assistant manager at the theater that had that was playing Star Wars wow so they would take me and, and just dump me in the theater and I would watch it like four times in a row at the well theater. you know but you know what they, you know speaking of which you know what they say about that those films uh, the director no the the right the, the is it Spielberg my son would know George I believe Lucas. He, George Lucas yeah he said that it's really just a cowboy just a western filmed in totally. space so you've totally. got the good guys and the bad guys and so many of the modern westerns uh, the people are so much in confusion. There's not really even a real hero. He's so messed up, you know, himself. He's all seeking vengeance instead of um, protecting the vulnerable, you know. But um, but so so in that process of of uh, uh, you know, when you said you like history, is it medieval history? What history? Is Western history? What history? All history? Yeah, um, I was really drawn initially to Russian history. <laughs> really? <laughs> so I, at a young age, yeah, I was reading. First of all, I read the story of Nicholas and Alexandra and the fall of the Russian Empire really? right, to, to communism. And and then I, when I went to college and and uh, I studied two years of Russian history, like I, I, I learned you know Peter the Great and Catherine the Great and the and, and you know the development of the Russian Empire and I was fascinated by all that. Well, you know, it goes back to the Ukraine, right? I'm I'm Ukrainian. You know about do you know about Vladimir, the Emperor Vladimir back in the day? Yeah, a I wrote, bit, yeah. I, I yeah. wrote a little. I wrote a little master's pe- uh, thesis on it, basically uh, that um, that they were they were converted because of beauty and bacon to Catholicism because the, the beauty <laughs> of Sophia, Hagia Sophia and the fact that if they became Muslim or Jewish, because they were choosing between those three religions, they wouldn't get to eat pork. <laughs> so uh, praise God for beauty and bacon in the Catholic Church. We'll be right back with more with Dr. Jerry Crete. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Now you can journey with other men on the adventure of a lifetime, growing in manly virtue through Bear's Man Cave community in our three-year school of manliness. Join at deepadventure.com. Better yet, you can lead your own sons through the same compelling video, audio, and written content. Can you imagine how much deeper your relationship with your dad could have been and how much more you could have learned and pitfalls you might have avoided if your dad had a tool like this to help to draw you both into a deeper, life-changing discussion? Now you have a trigger that you can pull that will take you into gritty discussions with other men and with your sons at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak Adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. You can gain traction in the virtues in my book, Deep Adventure, The Way of Heroic Virtue. And you can be inspired by my personal testimony of heartache and triumph with my book, A Surfing Guide to the Soul, both newly published by Sophia and available at our web store, deepadventure.com, and also on Amazon.com. This is a warning. The Bear Wozniak Adventure is dangerous. The radical change Bear challenges you to is not for wimps. Change this station now to a soft rock station before it's too late. You've been warned. Now, here is Bear Wozniak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. We want to invite you to seriously consider going to deepadventure.com. That'll, that'll forward you to our website, Bear School of Manliness. You can go to Bear's School of Manliness and join our man cave. 
Um, the Man Cave is a, a group of men. It's a non-Facebook community. And we have a lot of it's too serious. I try to keep telling the men lighten up a little bit, you know, in here. Uh, but it's like a non-Facebook community. We write, uh, we, talk, we challenge each other, we encourage each other. We have Zoom meetups once or twice a month. But we go through a three-year curriculum on manliness, covering all these different areas of manliness. And I have a lot of men who will come who've never really been fathered. And so in that context of that, we're kind of like the cave of Adullam, you know, where David's, um, all the misfits kind of showed up in the cave of Adullam with King David. And they formed each other, and God formed them into the mighty men of valor. So that's really what we are. And yeah, But what's really cool is, is the men go through month by month w one of the 36 uh, lessons together, and it's audio and video and short clips and all kinds of great, a lot of great stuff. Um, they're starting to lead their sons through the curriculum. The sons can't join the man cave, but they can get their own <coughs> access to code to the school. Because I have a lot of men, like just like our guest, Dr. Jerry Crete, who weren't really fathered. And so they're like, how do I father if I have never really been fathered? And so the men, we kind of father each other. And then we, and then we, we give you the tools so that you can work with your sons. and go If they're 13 age, like confirmation age and older, <clears throat> it's a great tool for them. So go to Bear's School of Manliness and join the man cave. You, 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 when you join the man cave, you're also part of the School of Manliness. Join us on our Zoom calls and uh, get gritty and real with us and, uh, and start leading your sons in a, in, a, in a path that they can grow into manhood. Our guest, Dr. Jerry Crete, uh, we could get, we could get he's, a, he's, a, he's a licensed therapist in his book, uh, Litanies of the Heart. You know, I always thought you were going to talk about, <clears throat> you know, how everyone loves, I love the, studying the Roman Empire because it's really, the, it's the, if you're going to study the history of the church, you're going to go there. But do, could, do you read those real smart authors like Do Do Dostoevsky and all those kind of people too? Yeah, well, I mean, I did read a bunch at the time it was years ago yeah. read a whole bunch of yeah Dostoevsky, uh Turgenev, uh you know tolstoy like all the because i also had like i don't my major was actually history and my minor was english uh, literature so i i and you know so i loved all that yeah. stuff for sure and so yeah. and so then but then you're <clears throat> you're what, tell us about your faith your faith life yeah well it's funny because i i kind of see it as I had a grace when I was quite young, and God just sort of planted in me this this sense of His presence. And uh, so, even as a young child, I you know, even though my parents didn't really go to church, they sent me to Catholic school. Hmm. But I kind of would go often on Sundays, just wander over to the church because I mean, back in the day, you just kids just went out. You just sent them out in the morning. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and they just came back at some point. But uh, and and I honestly found myself in, in, in church often. So I had this sense of connection with Christ early on. And I really think that's unusual for a child, I think. But um, just a sense of understanding suffering, understanding the cross spoke to me. But it was in high school that I actually um, had a girlfriend and... She got me to go on a retreat that was, uh, it was called Challenge, and it was, uh, mm. um, it's, it's a far part of Curcio. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so I, I, I got involved in that, and was, you know, went on one of those weekends, and then was a leader, and got to be a leader in that. It really led me into a journey there. I was in Ottawa. I don't know if you're familiar with the uh, order of priests called the Companions of the Cross. Oh yes, yes. Yeah, so they were founded by Father Bob Bedard, who was the pastor at St. Mary's Church in Ottawa, and that's where I, I went. Mm. I ended up going in high school, so back in the 80s. <laughs> so um, in any case, so I, I did, I did like just discover the faith more and more, and, and I think I remember being like 16 or 17, and I, a buddy of mine decided to take a, it was 1987, and we decided to take a bus it's insane. I'll never do this. But I, we took a bus from Ottawa to Vancouver, which is like going across the country, right? Mm. So sort of like going from New York to, you know, uh, Portland or something and, uh, and, and to go to Expo 87. And so, uh, but on the whole, that whole trip, I read, you mentioned him before, I read Augustine's Confessions. And, you know, I just absorbed that. I just fell in love with, with him and yeah. his story. So... Yeah, I love. It. I, I was reading. A, we were out sailing um, month of November and December in the Virgin Islands, and uh, I brought Augustine with me, and um, I reread the Confessions. It's just so. It's such a sweet, honest, transparent, but deep um, 
everyone needs to read that book at least once in their lives. It's just such a such a deep book. So, so during that journey, then you you it's, if you're going into Augustine, you're going deeper now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I was a sponge for for everything, and then when I got to college, because that was high school, and then I got to college, I uh, had that a priest who was a mentor to me. He was really a, like a father to me. And I had every question in the book for him. <laughs> and he was wise, very wise, and he had brilliant answers for everything. You're like, a, you're like Aquinas, they called him the dumb ox because he had too many questions, <laughs> right? But they, the professor said his voice will bellow, you know, because he, they called him the bull because he said he'll have a voice that will bellow after learning all this yeah. and having that. So you had that, you had that, you just always, it seemed like you were getting traction and you, and you just wanted to go deeper. Have you ever had that experience when you're studying? That you chink, almost like you're looking for gold and you're in a cave and there's a little speck of gold. You wonder what that's about. And you start digging on it, you get more, and then you find the mother load, and there's just a whole deep truth that you can mm -hmm. go and pursue. And, and then there's a vein that goes this way and a vein that goes that way. And all the time. My more recently, I've you know fallen in love, so to speak, with St. Maximus the Confessor. You want to talk about a man? I don't know if you know his story. No. But his story is amazing. He was in the seventh century. This is a guy, all right, he was raised in Constantinople, so he knew about the court and he was educated. And uh, but he decided to leave that to be a monk. He goes to a monastery. At that time there there was Islamic um, I guess hordes or whatever invading. So he literally had to go from a monastery in Syria to a monastery in North Africa and he was like constantly they were being invaded and he was having to leave so he was having to um, deal with that he might makes his way to Rome brilliant guy um, so he spent 20 years in Rome um, and uh, and and the Pope asked him to help defend against a heresy monothelitism which is the the belief that the heresy is that Jesus only has one will or that if he had a human will as well as a divine will, the divine will completely subsumed the humans to the point where it was yeah, that, That's a critical, critical heresy, you know, that, they, yeah. At, at first glance, when I first reading it, I was like, well, who cares, like whatever. Uh, you know what I was like, asking? I didn't that, understand it, but it, yeah, when you go deeper, you figure out why it's so important. You know, well, you know what, dude, I was, I was t talking in Tampa Bay last weekend. To the, they wanted me to come speak about Catholic masculinity and said, I'm not gonna come. If you talk about manliness, I'll come. So I asked the question, how many wills did Jesus have? It's a critical question. And this one little kid, about 12, 11 years old, raises both hands, jumps up, and said he had two wills. <laughs> his name was wow. Julius. And he, I said, I just said to his dad, you go, you go buy him an ice cream you know, TV. But, but it's, a, it's an essential question, and isn't it all about, uh, you know, I don't want to go too far into that because I want to get back to this, but, but Jesus was all God and all man. Of course, he had to have two wills. But so often in our own lives, we have that, that part of us that says, like Paul says, I, I, why do I don't do the things I want to do and why do I do the things I don't want? Why do I, there's a conflict, even within our own single will, there seems to be this conflict. And a lot of your book, I think, it, it focuses on the integrating that, dealing with, getting to yeah. know it. Yeah, absolutely. Um, in, in lining the will and the intellect and, but understanding the deep conflicts, which takes us to the whole concept of having multiple parts within us. Um, which is kind of a focus of my book is healing by kind of connecting with our inner parts mm -hmm. and working with them and understanding them and, and all that. So, yeah, and I think you know, confession is such a great going to confession. I want to get go deeper in this, but it's just like part part of confession is to is to seek forgiveness and it's to allow, it's to integrate that person to make that person whole, spirit, soul, and body, all in uni, all in union, and all in the right order. So. Um, I, I, want to, I want you to bring us to that focus when we come back. We're talking with Dr. Jerry Crete. Uh, he's, a, he's, a, he, he's a lover of truth and loves history. Um, and he, he's, a, he's a, a licensed therapist. His website is, what are the two websites they can reach you at, Jerry? Um, Transfigurationcounseling.com, which is my practice, and uh, which has coaches and counselors, and soulsandhearts.com which has all sorts of blogs and tons of information in online communities. And the new book is called what? Litanies of the Heart, Relieving Post-Traumatic Stress and Calming Anxiety Through Healing Our Parts. Through Healing Our Parts. We'll, get right, we'll be right back with more of Dr. Jerry Crete. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure.
this is Dan Laboon Markham with another episode of Country Up Church. Church is a word that conjures up a gunny sack of assorted reactions. You know, for some it raises pleasant memories, but for others, church no doubt summons up, well, a negative response. This calls for a little sorting out. First, church is not a building. Rather, it's a gathering of folks who are supposed to grow in love for Christ and others. In the New Testament, original language, church literally means called out ones. Folks called out by Christ to corporately worship God, honor God, minister to folks, and impact the world with the truth and the power and the love of the gospel. Second, going into a church doesn't make someone a Christian any more than going into a barn makes you a wagon. It's about relationship not religion. Third, some folks don't go to church because of hypocrites. Well, how do you do? You can find hypocrites most any place. So get over yourself and them. Imposters are everywhere. My advice, ignore hypocrites and associate with the real deal church folk who live and love like Jesus. They're available. Befriend them. And by the way, even the good Christians are still under construction, so give them a little space and grace. Furthermore, if you're following the Lord, you're still under construction too. Takes one to know one, partner. Now, if you're thinking you can faithfully follow Christ and not be a part of a local church, well, you're dead wrong. Two-thirds of the New Testament was written to the church. You aiming to throw away two-thirds of the New Testament? Buck up, boys and girls, and get on with getting on with your local church. This is Daniel the Boone Markham at countryup.org on a journey a few miles this side of heaven. We invite our mama bears to join with us at deepadventure.com. You'll have access to all of the Long Ride Home TV shows even before they air on EWTN. Plus, three years of the shareable Ocean Sunrise daily catechism videos. Plus, at deepadventure.com, a 20% discount at our online store with all of our great t-shirts and clothes and books and rosaries and medals and all kinds of accessories. You'll also get an autographed copy of Bear's latest book, and for a limited time, a Catholic biker stuffed teddy bear. All at deepadventure.com. Come on, Mama Bears, let's hear you roar. Did you know that each Saturday morning you can receive the shareable YouTube video version of the Bear Wozniak adventure in our inspiring weekly newsletter, even before it airs on the radio or hits the podcast apps? Never miss another episode. You can even binge watch Bear's inspiring guests. Think about the impact you can have sharing these videos with your friends. Go to deepadventure.com and click the subscribe button. Be the kind of man that when he gets out of bed in the morning, the devil says, oh no, he's up. Go to deepadventure.com and invite Bear to speak. Aloha, welcome back to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. This is your adventure guide, Bear Wozniak. Uh, People are attracted to this ministry because basically they're like, yeah, that's what I, what he just said, that's what I think. That, that's, that, I, thank God there's someone there saying what I think, you know, so it's not necessarily I'm saying anything new or saying anything different, but it's just that we're coming alongside each other and we're taking this path together. And we have some tools for you. If you go to the Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel, we have about uh, 60 of these 60 second shorts and we're producing new ones every week that you can share out uh, to the, uh, on your social media or share with friends or share in text with friends. Um, it's really critical. Uh, these little 60 second shorts are such a great way to draw people to the message. Uh, there's, we have about 60 of them based on excerpts from my newest book, 12 Rules for Manliness. And then our TV show, Long Ride Home, the motorcycle series on EWTN. We're starting to create shorts there too. And our radio show, this radio show, is we have a YouTube version of it. And Cindy and I are about to start a whole new series called Spirit of Adventure, uh, just kind of our adventures in Hawaii here and when we sail in the Caribbean and, and, and using that as a platform to just draw people closer to the Lord. So check out Bear Wozniak Spirit of Adventure YouTube channel. We're, we have Dr. Jerry Crete with us today. Um, uh, and we're talking about kind of really the integration of the soul. So can you help us understand 
what do you mean by uh, we have different parts? And do we need to reject some parts? Do we need to learn to understand them, accept them, love them, change them, what, transfigure them? What? Yeah, yeah. I, I would say that um, being in his image, right? He, we're in the image of the Trinity. Um, and so there is, Trinity is, is inherently diversity, but in a unity. And so we're not the same, of course, as, as God, <laughs> but we do have an inherent diversity and unity. And so we have parts that are just different aspects of self, if you will, kind of, you could say sub personalities, but you know, the way I look at it is we even use this in our own language. Like there's a part of me that, you know, just gets really angry about something because it's just like wrong. And another part of me sometimes is like, uh, no, I, I understand where that, that person's coming from or whatnot. There's a part of me that wants to work out and go to the gym every day. Another part of me just, I want to veg and watch TV. Like, so we have diverse, we're not just like, our personality is just not one thing. And, and once we, but, but when we connect with these parts, we realize that we can actually work with them. We realize that even the parts of us um, that struggle with something, even if it's like pornography or alcohol use or workaholism or something or video games or whatever, that, that they actually have a good intention even if the behavior is a problem. And so we want to connect with them, not to sh just get rid of them or destroy them, but we want to actually connect with them so that we can help them adapt in healthy ways and, 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 and work together with the whole system so that we get an inner harmony. So pornography, there's, yeah. a, there's a need there, probably a good need there, that we're, we're not... We're not there's a there's part of us that's seeking something that's a, that's probably a true good, but it's getting distorted. Or how do we come to, come to grips with that part yeah. of us? So what what happens there usually, right, is we talk about having an exiled part. So we have parts of our system that are feeling pain, shame, fear, and we've maybe from way back from early trauma and stuff, and we exile those parts away. And so, but once in a while, like, and, and the rest of our system, we're busy managing life and we're doing stuff. And, and part of the function is like, we don't want to have to be overwhelmed by bad feelings and stuff. So what happens though, is that we sometimes get overwhelmed anyway. And we're, maybe we're tired or we're hungry or we're lonely or we're something or we're triggered in some way. And those exiles and the shame associated with it or pain or fear or whatnot shows up and it's overwhelming the system. And one, we have another kind of part, we call them firefighters. Mm. And they, firefighters just, they're just gonna show up and they're gonna take out the fire. They don't care about your house, your drapes, your windows, your carpets, your, they're just gonna come in the house, burst in, take out the fire, that's their job. Well, I see that we have firefighters, for example, that want to numb out pain. Mm. And they will, and, and so we have a part that will look at, will get drunk, We'll look at pornography. We'll do anything to like numb out the pain and take it away. And the thing about pornography is that it gives you the illusion that you're connecting, that somebody wants you or that you're desirable or that somebody beautiful is letting you in. And, and, and so and you, you add that plus if you're masturbating, there's pleasure. So you get this combination of this illusion of being possibly wanted or possibly desired or let in or whatnot. Plus, with the pleasure that's associated with masturbation, creates this cocktail that's like the brain is going, yeah, I want that again. So it becomes like an addiction. And underneath it, but the real desire, right, of the heart is to have real connection. You know, to really be connected to, um, if you're a man, be with a woman and be loved and be desired and be in a healthy way and have emotional connection as well as physical connection. But if that is absent or for whatever reason, um, you know, is there's whatever problems or limitations, then this substitute, which, you know, I would say pornography is a, a bad substitute, but it's a substitute, um, ends up meeting the need at least temporarily. And that's why, and then with habit, it becomes an addiction possibly or some kind of compulsive behavior. It's an area that, uh, you know, it's, you know, I had, a, when I was speaking at the Tampa conference, I had the big meeting and then we had a breakout session and two ladies walked in at the back because I wanted to hear Bear speak and I said, you two should probably leave. Really, you know, 
and they got up and they left. And I said, I just said one word, pornography. I think it's it's so um, so easy to do. It's so easy to fall into that. First of all, uh, so many. I think every man that every man that I know now has to be on the lookout and needs to be ready to battle that. Um, but we need to do it in a preemptive way. How can right. you establish a mindset so that you uh, just don't drift into? I mean, because pornography is being presented to you almost. You know, whether you're watching TV or you're getting or you're looking at on the computer, whatever, it's being thrown at you. What's a, how do we how do we set our hearts to to first of all not fall into that sort of hypnotic um, sort of thing that takes over? And how do we how do we? It, it's more than just. It, I know it's more than just. Okay, I'm going to take these steps to eliminate those possibilities. I know there's a heart, there's something in us deeper that needs to be connected with and health, healed. Yeah. Maybe you can start there. I don't know. Yeah, you know, I think it starts with self-awareness because I can't tell, I've run groups for guys who, you know, struggle with sexual addictions of various kinds and, um, and it's invariable that <laughs> you're, the guy's like, ah, oh, I was so good for six months. I didn't look at pornography or nothing. And then, you know, two days ago I did and he feels so bad and you're like, I have no idea why. And then I ask a few questions about what happened the week before mm-hmm. <laughs> you find out like, you know, his dog died, his, he had this major work problem at work that was stressful and his wife was mad at him or something and all these things. And you're like, oh, and it didn't occur to you <laughs> that all those stressors contributed you to you turning to pornography. So it's, it, it, it's a cope, it's a strategy to cope, right? It's an unhealthy one, but it works in the moment to run away from your problems and stresses. Um, and but it has its own consequences that are negative that come after right so what you have to do is first of all have the self-awareness to recognize what's going on in my life and that might cause me to be vulnerable to something like pornography and then to have strategies in place to say okay instead of pornography what do i need to actually do to have good connection right and so all of that presence of mind to have the self-awareness and the strategy has to be in advance you kind of have to have it ready to go Mm-hmm. In, in order to not just to re- like you said, like you said, hypnotic. Because I think once you're in the mode of like looking at porn- starting, even, well, I, I can through- I could get hypno- hypnotized watching baby fails, which is my favorite thing, to <laughs> or boat ramp follies. But all of a sudden, I go, where did the last forty five minutes go? But if you drift into exactly. that other realm, um, then it's kind of got you. You're almost like unaware. You're just you're not, as Augustine said, another one of those things he stole from me. Um, the slippery slope, as, as, mm-hmm. as he referred to it. You know, they always steal our best lines, don't they? Those are early church fathers. But it, <laughs> it, it, it is like that. We're talking with Dr. Jerry Crete. We're going to talk more about, specifically about, um, not just overcoming the, the pornography, because every man has to fight that, but how to become a whole and healthy person uh, in all realms, but in, 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 particularly in that realm. We'll be right back with more of the Bear Wozniak adventure. People love our EWTN TV show, Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak. Thanks to you, the show has won four different tally awards. And now, instead of waiting each week for the next episode to air, you can actually binge watch our show and even share it with your friends when you go to deepadventure.com and join the Mama Bears or the Man Cave. Along with all the other benefits, you get total access to all the seasons of our aired episodes, plus instant access to episodes that won't even air for several months. Long Ride Home with Bear Wozniak, a great way to communicate the gospel in a gritty enough way that even tough men will stop and watch at deepadventure.com. Deep Adventure Ministries is grateful to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for underwriting the Bear Wozniak adventure on EWTN. Notre Dame Federal Credit Union provides car loans, mortgages, SBA loans, and depository accounts nationwide, as well as 24-hour support. Go to deepadventure.com to find their link, or go to notredamefcu.com. Mahalo to Notre Dame Federal Credit Union for making the Bear Wozniak adventure possible. When you go to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel, you get access to all of our free playlists, including hundreds of episodes of the Bear Wozniak Adventure, plus the three-year journey through the whole catechism in our Ocean Sunrise Catechism series. 
and you even get short clips and live streaming of Baron Cindy's Adventures in Paradise videos. Go to YouTube and subscribe to the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure channel. Are you still listening? I thought we warned you to change to an easy listening station. Well, you asked for it. Here is more of the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Aloha, this is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. I'm your host, Bear Wozniak. I want to invite you guys, guess what? The, the TV show Long Ride Home, and now in its fourth season, airing on EWTN, is also uh, available on the Prime Video Network, and soon it'll be coming to uh, our YouTube channel too. Um, it, the, and the fourth season, there's 11 episodes, all filmed in Hawaii, all filmed with basically the same knuckle draggers that rode, rode with me on our escapades across the United States. Um, it's, it's really a cool thing for you, especially you women. You want to know, how can I get my brother-in-law or how can I get my sons or my husband to go deeper in the Lord? I know so many men. Uh, shout out to Big Guns, Trace Chamberlain. I'm sure he's going to listen to this show. Um, who just had me walking by the walking by the, the TV and go, oh, motorcycles. And uh, next thing you know, he was on the slippery slope to become a Catholic and, uh, and get his life uh, you know, reconnected with the Lord. So that show is a really great evangelistic tool. You have to speak to men in their language. And one of the, one of the things that really always tends to get men's attention is motorcycles. So talk, talking with Dr. Jerry Crete, um, <clears throat> he's, a, he's a licensed therapist. And basically what it does, it helps you get in touch with these different parts of you. Some of the parts that you reject, uh, not so much that they should be rejected, they should be understood and healed and transfigured, as his ministry is called. Um, we were talking about pornography. Um, but isn't there, what is the part of that person, what is the part that, that, can, that, that needs to be healed in that? What, so what is... Instead of just resisting the devil and he will flee, that's part of it. But Dr. Crete, I know like I'm a, I don't know if you know I'm a champion tandem surfer. You know, I lift my wife when we tandem surf. I don't know if you know that. Oh, but wow. but um, a big part of surfing, of, of tandem surfing, is the woman where she places her eyes. Uh, everything, that, everything that we do starts with her eyes. She may turn. I, I put her in a lift. And then we lock into these 45 different lifts, some one-arm lifts, some very extreme really require the woman to be extreme but her eyes lock into maybe my shoulder or maybe the far horizon or maybe her hand that's extended vertically above her every lift there's a focus point and when she locks in I can tell okay we're locked in but if her eyes move I'll tell her look at the horizon or look up I, I can without even I mean I can tell when her eyes move because she loses balance she shit her balance shifts I think that's part of the winning against uh, when the war against pornography is where is our focus? Do we spend time with Jesus? Do we spend time meditating on His Word? Do we pray the Hail Mary? Do you really want to have something as 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 an, as as disgusting as pornography interrupt your personal relationship with the Lord? How about with your wife? There's so many sexless marriages now. I've heard, and I think it's because men and I know women too are just sliding into pornography. It's the easy way to to get gratification, but tell, I'm sorry, just run with it. Tell me what your thoughts are. Yeah, no, a bunch of thoughts come to mind. Um, I mean, one thing is that I think boy, like it's unfortunate now that, you know, boys as young as seven, eight, nine are being exposed to what I consider to be hardcore pornography. And uh, which, you know, when I was young, it was Playboy magazines. It wasn't, it was bad, but it was you're, 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 You had to f stumble across them or maybe, a friend of yours had an uncle who hit him in the back of a garage, but you didn't. They weren't just th being uh, thrown at you. Yeah. So what happens is sex in that case is a way of coping, right? So if you're alone, lonely, sad, feel rejected, feel whatever, you pornography is like a hit, drug. It's like a hit. It makes you you're, you're hypnotic, like you said. You go into the state, and what you learn is it's all about what I get out of it so if you're masturbating mm. it's just all about your pleasure and so there's no manliness in a sense in that because wow. i would say manliness is about giving of self mm. right and so you know you, you enter into marriage sometimes and if, if a guy's had a lot of pornography which most guys have had a lot of exposure to pornography they actually don't it's all about like what can i get out of this and women are begin be, becoming more and more like this as well unfortunately 
and uh, it's terrible when women become like men sexually because that's not good. Um, and 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 so it's about relearning what it is, who you are as a man, what you have to give. Mm. Right, you're bringing life to mm. somebody. You're offering yourself to somebody sexually. Mm as a gift and it's powerful mm. but not if it's just what can i get out of it what are we each taking from each other and the whole thing breaks down and becomes meaningless i love that you know it, thomas aquinas described love as seeking the true good for the other yeah and then of course john paul ii and his love and responsibility and his theology of the body uh love is self-donation so if you seek the true good for the other through self-donation that's it. That's what a man is. You know what? That's a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing to be a man, to, to be willing to lay your life down for those that God's called you to serve in our, in our, in our, in the islands, we call it Kuleana. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's our, it's, it's not just our responsibility. It's us. It's our very nature to lay that, to lay our lives down for, for those God's called us to serve. And if you don't do that, you never get to be happy. You know, mm -hmm. you, you don't really pursue happiness, but if you pursue the true good, there's a joy that comes with that, and if, you, yeah. if if you're seeking if you're seeking pleasure, it's shame and confusion, don't you think? Am I? Well, I mean, I think pleasure can come with obviously giving of self, but the, right, that, right, the right. locus of focus is 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 not just that. But I think it speaks to the bigger picture too. I think what you're getting at when you talk about cowboys and so on is is meaning and purpose. And I think mm. to be a man, it isn't just about being like Theoden, I don't know if you remember in, in the Two Towers in, in the Lord of the Rings, who's just like, remember, he, he's like, he's supposed to be the king or whatever, Rohan, but he's like, he's all white and he's not moving and the orcs are attacking, he's not doing anything. He's mm, like, wow. You know? Wow. And, 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 and it, Gandalf has to come with his, and wakes him out of that spell. Mm -hmm. And he, his life comes back in. And the first reaction he has is, let's get our arms and fight. We can't allow ourselves right. to be taken over. Right. Right. So, and that's, I think that's manliness. Like we have to have, we have to, we're, we have to have a reason to fight. We have to have a reason, a purpose to live. And, and, and that is loving and serving and providing and being with the people that we care about, not just being absent and disconnected and addicted and, you know, and basically imp impotent. There's all, oh my God, what a powerful statement. It's being blameful and blameless too. It's like it's everybody else's fault that I'm in this place and not mm -hmm. taking personal responsibility. But <clears throat> we find our joy when we do that. When we, you know, there's this thing now happening now with young men who, d d young people are not showing up for work on time. I have a lot of people, I, men I talk to with businesses, can't get anybody to show up to work or they, you know, they, they, don't, they don't really work like they should. Well, when you don't work, you're, um, it's, it's, it's sad for your soul. It makes your soul yucky. There's a certain godlike character when Jesus said, "Even now, the Father and I, we work." There's a dignity in in serving others. There's a dignity in working. If you don't have that, it's not just oh, it's really evil of you to to seek pornography or to just be gaming and, and not not be uh, serving others. It it makes your soul yucky. It makes you weak. Like I like what you said. It makes you um, impotent. Um, but when you just do, there's a saying: "How you do anything is how you do everything." You know, when I train, I'm a trained ninja black belt, and I was lucky to train with the first white, the first white ninja. You would love him. He, Obi Wan Kenobi is kind of patterned after Master Stephen Hayes. But um, oh. but he said to me, "How you get out of a chair, your penmanship, how you walk. It's not like trying to be super uptight about everything, but there's a certain grace that you should move with, and a determination that you should move with. So, how you do anything is how you do everything. So so when you let your your outside life, everybody sees you as this up, you know, hardworking upstand guy. But in the back, you've got this issue with gaming or drinking or pornography or whatever. That permeates your whole life. You can't hide. You can't just, you know, tuck that away. Eventually, it's going to come out. Well, you've got a couple minutes to really share your wisdom. I won't interrupt. Why don't you give us your, your final thoughts here? Sure. Yeah. And I think that we have a tendency, though, with those parts of ourselves that like you're saying whatever drinking or pornography or whatever gaming then we get a little bit like okay i'm going to be tough and and we're going to banish those things and i i don't think you i don't think that's the way to go i think when you banish away the parts even if they have problematic behaviors they come back mm. 
Mm. They don't go away. We're stuck with these parts. We do need, I love that you said transfigure because, <laughs> yeah, that's my practice. Yeah. We do need to bring those, we need to mentor and love and father and guide the parts of ourselves that are troubled. So mm. we actually bring them closer, not further away. Mm. And it's, it's exactly what Christ did, right? He literally went to the people who were the most wounded and he stayed with them and befriended them and brought them out of that place. And that's what we have to do to our inner parts. We need to love them. Um, and that's what I hope my book shows. And I hope my, there's a and guy. The and the name of the book is? <clears throat> Litanies of the Heart. Litanies of Relieving the Heart. Post Traumatic Stress and Calming Anxiety Through Healing Our Parts. I think everybody in the, this day and age with the rapidness of rapid fire life, everybody suffers some, to some degree or another. A little bit of that PTSD and the, and the anxiety of all the all the change that's going on. You know, it's a, it's rampant. Everyone, every. I'm looking forward to digging deep into the book. I haven't got to get. I haven't. I don't know where it went. I never did get it. And I've been traveling so much. It's probably tucked away in the, someplace. But by looking forward to reading it, I think it's really important. The integration of the of all these parts, loving all these all the all the different parts of you and and bringing them into uh, transformation. Thank you, Doctor Jerry Crete. Uh, the name of the book again is. Litanies of the heart, relieving of the heart. stress. Yes. Yeah, I, I mean, when we were filming Long Ride Home, I was telling my son, my sons and I got together last week, and we we're both like, we got PTSD from filming Long Ride Home. Here was this great, great, great show, but we are like, I don't ever want to see a motorcycle again. You know, it's like, it's just uh, we're we're done with that show now. But 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 PTSD in this day and age, there's so many rapid fire changes in our lives, hard to keep up with. But I think the book is real, very timely. And thank you for joining us on the the Bear Wozniak adventure. My pleasure. I hope I get to meet you someday. Yeah, it'd be, be great. Cool. Okay, man. Spend some time in Atlanta. <laughs> Atlanta. Yeah, well, we always stay in that little hotel in the in the airport because uh, that's we're transitioning from overseas or whatever. We just collapse in there. So probably I bump into a lot of people in the Delta Sky Lounge. <laughs> oh, oh, I love it there. Well, I would much rather meet you in Hawaii to be perfectly well, honest. Well, then, then uh, you know you can you can do that. You can do that. You can come to Hawaii. You can just buy a one way ticket. Not leave. Oh, right. Yeah, I might never go back. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Dr. Jerry Crete. This is the Bear Wozniak Adventure. The word ha means breath. Aloha means to give breath. May the breath of the Holy Spirit, may the breath of the Holy Spirit, aloha you. Aloha. Thanks for listening to the Bear Wozniak Adventure. Find more manly conversation at the Bear Wozniak Deep Adventure YouTube channel. Subscribe and ring the bell.